By the summer of 1914, the country was on the brink of civil war. Two armed militias were openly marching throughout the streets of Ireland, one pledging to fight to oppose Home Rule, the other pledging to fight to protect Home Rule. So what happened? This is where we go back to politics for a moment. In 1910, a major political event unfolded. This is known as the Home Rule Crisis. Herbert Asquith was the leader of the Liberal Party in the House of Commons in Westminster. In the 1910 election, they got 273 seats, which was not enough to form a government. To do this, he needed to join in a coalition with the Home Rule Party. John Redmond, the leader of the Home Rule Party, agreed, but only if Ireland was granted Home Rule. Asquith agreed to this, but there was a problem of the House of Lords veto. A veto is the right of the House of Lords to reject bills passed by the House of Commons and the House of Lords were controlled by the Conservative Party at this time. They supported the Unionists in Ireland and were against granting Ireland Home Rule. In order to solve this problem, Asquith passed the Parliament Act of 1911. This meant that the House of Lords could only veto a bill twice and after that it became law. This meant that Ireland would have Home Rule by 1914. So what was the reaction to this in Ireland? The moderate nationalists, the majority of nationalists who supported Home Rule were ecstatic. The unionists were outraged. They did not want Home Rule for two main reasons. One, they believed Home Rule is Rome Rule. This meant that you may as well bring the Pope from Rome over to rule the country himself and the Protestant unionists would be a minority in a Catholic state and discriminated against. Two, industry would be damaged. The North East, where unionists were a majority, was the only area of Ireland that was industrialised, and they felt that breaking the link with Britain would damage this industry and economic prosperity. They took two main actions in response to the Home Rule Bill. One, in 1912, 240,000 men and 230,000 women signed a petition called the Ulster Solemn League and Covenant that pledged them to do whatever it takes to stop Home Rule coming into Ireland. There are rumours that some even signed it in their own blood. Two, they formed the Ulster Volunteer Force, who vowed to use violence to prevent Home Rule coming into Ireland. They imported rifles in the Larne gun running in Antrim, and by the summer of 1914, they had over 37,000 weapons. The British soldiers did not stop them, as some officers were sympathetic to the Unionist cause. So what was the nationalist response to all of this? They responded with the formation of the Irish Volunteer Force. It was set up in the Rotunda in Dublin in 1913, November. Owen McNeill was chosen as its Commander-in-Chief. 3,000 men signed up on the night, and by the summer of 1914, they had over 200,000 men all over the country. Unbeknownst to McNeill, the Irish Volunteers were secretly infiltrated by the IRB who held most of the major positions in the movement. The Irish Volunteers imported 1,500 German Mauser rifles at Hoth and Kilcool in 1914. By early 1914, a female auxiliary wing to the Irish Volunteers was founded, Cumann Amon. They marched in military-style uniform around Dublin, yet their role was first aid and they trained in dispatch carrying, amongst other things. So, you had a situation in Ireland where you now have three armed groups, if you include the Irish Citizen Army. Openly marching throughout the streets with weapons on parade, one bound to fight to stop Home Rule, the other pledging to fight to protect Home Rule, and civil war was looming. The Irish Citizen Army, by the way, were vowing to have a socialist revolution, which we'll deal with later on. So peace talks even began between all of the political leaders involved, including Redmond, Carson and Asquith. Partition was already being agreed on in 1914. This meant to divide the country in two parts. The only argument was over which counties would remain part of the UK. Yet World War I broke out in August 1914 and prevented civil war in Ireland. When the war broke out, Home Rule was indefinitely postponed. 170,000 Irish volunteers joined the British Army. They became known as the National Volunteers. Why did they do this? Because John Redmond urged them to go and fight in the war as Britain would remember the favour that the Irish did for her. 
and when the war was over, after Christmas, she would grant Ireland home rule. The UVF also joined the British Army and their thousands to show loyalty to the British. Yet 11,000 Irish volunteers stayed in Ireland under McNeil with the aim of protecting home rule for Ireland. The IRB's motto was England's difficulty is Ireland's opportunity. They believed Ireland should plan a rebellion while Britain had her back turned to Europe. They established a military council in 1915 to begin planning the rising. It included Patrick Pierce, Thomas Clark, Eamon Kent, Tomás Macdonough, Sean McDermott and Joseph Plunkett. James Conley and the Irish Citizen Army soon after joined forces with the rebels as the rebels heard they were planning a socialist rebellion and did not want Conley's rebellion to disrupt their own. The problem was that the IRB only had a few hundred men and they needed the support of the 11,000 strong Irish volunteers under McNeil, but McNeil was not a very militant man and would not agree to a rising unless the British did something first. So Joseph Plunkett forged a document pretending it was from the British in Dublin Castle. It said that all the members of the volunteers were to be rounded up and arrested and their premises raided. He showed this to McNeil and McNeil believed it. The volunteers were now on board. Planning was underway and the date was set for Easter Sunday 1916. So to recap this episode, in the 1910 Westminster election, John Redmond and the Home Rule Party secured Home Rule for Ireland for 1914. They got around the issue of the House of Lords veto by Asquith passing the Parliament Act of 1911. This event is known as the Home Rule Crisis. Two reasons why the Unionists were against Home Rule for Ireland. One, discrimination, i.e. Home Rule is Rome Rule. And two, damage to industry. Two actions that the Unionists took against the proposed Home Rule Bill. One, they signed the Ulster Solemn League and Covenant. And two, the formation of the UVF. The Irish volunteers were set up in response to this. In August 1914, World War I indefinitely postponed Home Rule for Ireland and prevented civil war, and 170,000 Irish volunteers went and fought in the British Army. 11,000 stayed under McNeil. The IRB's motto was England's difficulty is Ireland's opportunity, and they forged the Castle document in order to trick McNeil into committing his men to the Rising. The stage is set for rebellion in Dublin. Planning is underway. Men from London, Liverpool and Glasgow even move to Dublin to prepare. Will all go to plan? Find out in episode 3, which details the final preparations and the rising itself. Remember, I'm Miss Murphy and thank you for watching Know Your History. Like and subscribe for more.